we are back, I hope. Um, let's see. So anyway, I had to do a little bit of an awkward thing and switch to OBS here. And, uh, hopefully this will work for, for us. And not as good, but the problem is this game will only stream if you capture the monitor. And I have to figure out... OBS lets me capture the main monitor. So let's see what's going. We've got Curtis Grandison leading off. And, uh, let's see. He's doing quite well. And he strikes out. So I'm not getting a good start today against Ross Stripling, the Dodger pitcher. Neil Walker is up. And get the base hit. And he has, he's pretty fast. But who's up next? The Pez. Let's go for the. Nah, still in the game. And another base hit. So we got two on, one out. And. Lucas Duda is up. I'm going to hit and run now. And we got two down, but now we got man on second and third. Avoided the double play. And Travis DeArmond's up. Let's see if he can do anything. And he did, no, he's going to fly out. Oh, well. So. He did get two hits, so that's a good start. Okay, Jack, Jason DeGrom goes up against L.A., and they're starting with the third baseman, Louis Yan... Louis Yandela. Oh, not the most... Hmm. Don't know that name. And he grounds out. The catcher, Yasmani Grandal. And two up, two down. Uh, kind of, sort of looks like Chavez with me. They got the little stuff going on in the outfield. Yes, he'll pew. And, so three up, three down. After one, Wilma Flores is up. Fortel. And he flies out. So two down. Cabrera gets a base hit. And goes to first. Two out. Man on first. And <laughs> this is not what we want, but I'm certainly not going to pinch hit turn this early in the game. And he gets a base hit. Okay. That's two out, man. Two rounds. I can hit the balls. And no. Because then we'll have three outs. So now it's all up to Grandison. He got man on first and second. And two outs. And if he doesn't get a hit, then he strikes out again. He is not having a good day today. Mr. Grandison isn't so far. So. Okay. First baseman, Adrian Gonzalez. And he walks. So let's go to double play depth here. Um. So. Let's see. Infield, double play depth. Uh, 
not quite one pitch because we didn't walk the guy it wouldn't have been, been, been a one run game and Howie Kinnick the second base Kendrick the second baseman different lineup than I'm used to and he flies out and that's one out And Paul Crawford, the left fielder. And two, one out. Man on first. Let's go back to our double play depth and hope that we can get a double play with Enrique Hernandez. Let's, let's strike him out. So the Brom is uh, calming, hopefully calming down. And a fly out. And that ends the inning. So, but they get two runs on a walk and a hit. And a home run. So, we are a bit behind the eight ball now. And Neil Walker gets a single. We don't want, I'm going to do a hit and run here because I don't want to and get the second one out one out man on second and who is up Lucas Duda so let's see what happens he gets it and he's going to round and come in so Okay, we got one run in, man on first, one out, and Travis DeArmond's up. And he gets a, he gets a double, man on second and third, one out, and now it's up to Wilma Flores. And he flies out. Oh, gee. What happened here? Okay. Whew. Tag up in second base. And we're going to try to get that second run. I thought we were having a problem here. Ah, he's out. And go back to Luis Yandelo. Yandelo third baseman and ground out and Yasmani Grandel catcher he grounds out so we've got two down and Yasiel Pugh the right fielder And he doubles the two down. And now we have the very dangerous Adrian Gonzalez. So let's see. Uh, uh, giving up the gopher balls. It's two home runs. Two two run home runs in the first three innings. Not good. He needs to settle down and keep the ball in the park. And that ends the inning. So we're behind four to one. And hope he do something against Stripling. And we've got the bottom of the order coming out. out. Cabrera. Get the, get the double. 
one down, man on second, Travis Stamp. Um, Jason, uh, now DeGrom is up again. It's too early to pinch hit. And he strikes out. Two out. So now it's all up to Grandison, who I'm hoping can drive him in. Deep, 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 deep. And he gets a two-run home run. Okay. That's better than I expected. So now we got, uh... We got a two-run home run, we got man, we got the bases cleared, but we now have three to four. So, three runs, so with in, still in the ball, we're back in the ball game here, we don't walk it. So. So, let's see what we can do next inning, but we gotta stop them from hitting the... Jason DeGrom has to keep his pitches down. And that's a fly ball. What is going on here? Very long single. <laughs> no, it's a ground out. That's a very weird animation. I think that that is what we call a bug. And base hit. Okay, one out, man on first. We're going to go to the double play depth here. Oh, man. Hopefully you're hearing me. Uh, when I have to stream like this, my, my microphone is on the second, different, wrong side. So it works a lot better when I can have this in the middle. But... I can't because then you wouldn't see it. So let's go to double play depth. Uh, okay. Um, Enrique Hernandez is a shortstop. Um, he so they got... They got him out, but they scored a run. Two outs, and... You mean Garcia? They replaced the pitcher already? All right. So, five to three, and Cepedes is up. And a long fly out. Lucas Duda. And another plot. And Travis Dionnen. And that ends the inning. So we're now in the middle of the fifth and we're behind five to three. Uh, they have replaced their pitcher, and now they're at the back at the top of their own lineup with Luis Yandolo. I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. Um, there we go. Okay. So... Uh, Randall, the catcher. And he's out, so that will make it two outs. Yes, he will pew. And okay, infield single with two outs. And that ends the inning. Gonzalez ground out to the first baseman, and that ends the inning. So, now we're at the top of the six, Wilma Flores, we're getting back down to the bottom of the order, and it may be time to think about... 
especially if we've got runners on and when uh, the ground is supposed to come up. Okay, nice triple, nice triple by Wilma Floyd. Now we just gotta hope Conforto can get him in. what we got for the bullpen. Our bullpen is not tired, except for Jersey Familia. So we have Jeremy Blevins um, and Bartolo Colon. Uh, I think I am going to... Hmm, who do I go with? I think I'm going to go with Colon here. And put him in in the bullpen. Let him. Mr. Grom's starting to get tired. And now we need to go to our ball batters. Who do we have that we can bring in? Um, we got Rene Rivera, another catcher. Juan Lagares. And then some infielders who are not very good hitters. So I'm going to go with Juan Lagares. Bring him in. Yes. So we're going to have a pinch hitter. See if we can drive in this run. And nope. in Bartolo Cologne and we're ready to continue. So the bottom of the set. One down. Let's see what we got here. Now we can drift. So we got two down. Let's go the bottom of the lineup. And that's a fly out. And that ends the inning. So we got one, two, three inning by Cologne. And uh, we got three more innings to go. Of course, if we're behind after the top of the ninth, uh, then no reason to die just to bat. So, Grandison is up, and flies out. And they got Pedro Diaz, so they have yet a third picture on. Neil Walker gets his hit. And uh, we need to be a little bit aggressive, so we're going to go for the hit and run. And he's... And gets a steal. And strike him. So we got man on second. Two out. And it's all up to Lucas Duda to hope to drive him in. And that's not going to happen. He pops up. So we're, going, we're down to six outs and we're two runs behind. Send in a yeah. They're sending in Pinchetto. They want security runs, and he does what they wanted him to do. 
so let's so let's go to double play death Baseman is up. So let's go back to regular death and feel normal. And let's see if we can do anything. And two outs. This is good. This is much better. So now it's our eighth, top of the eighth here, and strike them out. No, oh, we're down to five outs. And this Chester Hatcher's, Chris Hatcher, is pitched very well. Now we're back in it with, what, with Cologne going against Riesel Pugh, who gets a single. Let's go to double play depth. And try to get that double play. And then and fly out, one down. We still want to try to get the double play even with one down. Trying for a double play. And Howie Kendrick's a full hitter. So let's uh, shift our outfield right. Oh, oh wait a minute. He is a. Uh, no, we want to shift our outfield left, as we can call it. Striking out. Yes, we did. And go back to normal. Out. And that ends it, the inning. So this is it. This is our last chance. We're down two runs. Um, we're going to be pinch hitting for Cologne. And, uh, but let's let Cabrera come up. And actually, I don't believe I told, uh, Cologne is a bad hitter, so, let's see what we got here. Yeah. Okay, we need to throw someone and get someone in the bullpen, and we need to, we're going to bring Rene Rivera in as a Just in case we end up in extra innings, 
I want to and a base hit. So we got one out man on first. And now it's Grandison needs to do something. And that ends the ball game. So we lose five to three, and uh, gave up a few golf balls, and Degrom did, and that's kind of what messed us up here. Okay, so let's get on to our baseball history here. Uh, this out I'm gonna. Uh, now let me get out of it and you can see here we just kind of <laughs> did not do very well. Um, leave the game, save it, and hopefully my computer will cooperate today. It so far has been, but uh. <laughs> This computer can be a bit fussy, uh, getting older, and maybe sometime early next year I'll replace it. Anyway, so, this is, of course, the Baseball History Comes Alive site, um, and these folks do an amazing job, I think, uh, if you're interested in baseball history. So we got NFL, this is very appropriate, because, um... We had the uh, the Cubs make it the World Series for the first time in like 70 years. And they're talking here about Wrigley Field. They played the first ever championship game between the Bears and Giants in 1933. 1933. So... Uh, so, the NFL was pretty new then, and they decided to start this championship thing, two divisions, and the Giants, who were 11-3, and, and the Bears, who were 10-1, uh, I don't know how one team played 13, 14 games and one played 13, but it was what it was. Um, they play a few more games now. Bears had a home field advantage and it took place in Wrigley Field in December. Now we're talking cold here. <laughs> um, five Bears pass. This is the Bears running. Let's see. He's running and the other guy's trying to tackle him. Notice the leather helmets, the official, you know, no zebra stripes, it looks like kind of some kind of white uni uniform with a bow tie, and the Chicago players, he's like giving them a strong arm sort of thing as he goes, see some of the buildings in the background. And, uh, it was a, back then it was considered an unusually high score. That's interesting. That's a score that's, today's game is fairly typical. Um, it, believe it or not, there were only 25,000 people. Not a sellout. Not a sellout. You would think it would have been. Um, so let's see what else we got. Anything else interesting here? Tony O. Tony Oliva. I remember when he was still playing. And uh, they say he should be in the Hall of Fame. Let's look at the... Of course, there's been his injuries... Greatest in, okay, 15 years. That's not a short time. 
Um, he had 220 home runs, 304. Those aren't bad. He had more All-Star selections than Joe DiMaggio. Uh, Rookie of the Year. So he was... He was a great hitter. Golden Glove outfielder early in his career. Um, why he has always fallen short, it is a question. One vote. Tony Perez. So, it was a coaching and in 2006 Minnesota Twins Hall of Fame. So, this is him two years ago. That's him in 19, early in his career, 1965 All-Star Game. And that's with uh, Joe Maurer and Rod Carew. And this is when he had a knee surgery, a ankle surgery. And that's some more pictures of him. Him playing designated hitter later in his career. Ted Williams Dent. So this is probably the late 60s. Uh, his batting stance. And they say Mexico, reunited in Mexico City in 1972 with his father and his sister. Uh, Billy Martin and Harmon Killebrew. That was quite a lineup. Jim Cat and Bobby Allison. Or oh, Willie Mays and Sandy Koufax. Two great players. And, uh, 1965 World Series, his rookie year. They have a statue. There's his statue of him. And he was there for the unveiling of it. And again, early in his career, another Dick Allen who was overlooked. And I believe... Uh, 1965 World Series ticket. American League Dodgers. Doug Albaki. $12. <laughs> I don't think any World Series tickets are going for any $12 this year. So unless someone wins one in a contest or something. So, there you have it. Um, I didn't see any... Let's see if we have anything else that's compelling. So, now we're going to have the Cubs and the Indians. Personally, I'd like to see the Cubs win, only because I'm a Mets fan, I'm a National League fan, and the Cubs fan have been, they've suffered so long. I mean, it's been an excruciating long time since they have been in the World Series, and it would be kind of nice if they won it, I think. Um, and my apologies to any Cleveland fans, but I kind of, you know, kind of like to see them win. Let's see, we've got, this is 1931, the building of Cleveland Municipal Stadium. Just getting started, a little skeleton of the stadium there. Well underway. They kind of got the skeleton going. It only cost two and a half million and hold up to 78000 Eight, nine months. So this, it opened about a year after it started. It was const started construction. And uh, the first major league game was not for another year when the Cleveland Indians started playing there. Now that's interesting. If this thing was re open in 1931, I can see... It, you know, the Indians were in their old stadium and they continued for that season, but I would have thought 
they would have moved in there at the beginning of the 1932 season, which would have been more like April. Not sure why that was. So, some people thought they were trying to win the 1932 Olympics. Um, except Los Angeles got that award before it was even approved by the voters. So, this had nothing to do with the 1932 Olympics. But it certainly served them for many years in Cleveland. Um, let's see. And Mickey Mantle's birthday was this week. I think, and so they have a little tribute to him. Birthday tribute to great Mickey Mantle. Another one, if his if injuries and his own uh, problems with alcohol and etc. didn't come, you wonder how what he could have done if he had stayed healthy. He didn't injure his knee his rookie year. If he was able, if he didn't run into problems with alcohol, what he could have done. 80. Man, he, he was, only would have been, he, mm, he would have been 85 today, uh, on Thursday. And, uh, so it's a shame he's still not around. Though. And he's been gone for some time, but again, that was, he, Unfortunately, he ran into alcohol problems, and that pretty much messed his body up. 18-year uh, career, greatest switch hitter, look, 20-time all wait a minute, 20-time All-Star, yeah, he died 20 over 20 years ago, so he was only in his 60s, which is kind of sad that he, but again, part of it was his own, their own problems that he was never able to resolve. 18, how did he select it for the All-Star team 20 times if he only had an 18-year career? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he was saying, and had he taken better care? Yeah. He could have done so much more, if not for, if he had taken care of himself, if, if he had not been injured, if they had better treatment. I mean, let's, you know, let's be realistic. They did not have the rehab and the things they have for the players today. Um... My guess is, had he suffered the type of knee injury he suffered in 1951, in nine, you know, today, he, you know, this is, well, this is probably in the 80s, if, if that had uh, Joe DiMaggio and Mickey Mantle. You know, Joe DiMaggio, it's in his career, he played with Lou Gehrig and he played with Mickey Mantle. Uh, quite a long career. Mickey Mantle and Ted Williams. That's him. You know, back in Oklahoma with his father, Mutt. You know, he, he's a country boy. And his mother. And, and that's probably, you know, I would say part of it too. He, you know, to move to New York, to become a big celebrity. I don't know if he was prepared for that. Had any, you know, to handle that as well as he should. But getting back to what I was saying about treatment, that injury he suffered his rookie year, he probably would have fully recovered from that with today's uh, techniques. And, uh, you know, he would have had the surgery... They knew they know better rehab. Someone, I don't know who the person circled in. They're not. It's hard to tell. But that's him after a home run. But like I said, had he had today's uh, rehab techniques, you know, who knows what he could have done. 
but uh, it was a very different time. That's him with his wife and his mother. That looks like his wife, and that would be his mother. Um, his sons. Wow, he had four sons. Them signing autographs. Martha Plate in the clubhouse. Look at that. Look at those swings. That swing of his. Moose Gown, Minnie Minosa, Nellie Fox, and Mickey Mantle. Right here. That's, I think we've, I think we've, uh, gone through it. Anyway, so I think we're going to end it here, and, uh, hope you found it interesting. We had a, well, not as good a ball game as I would have liked, but at least I was able to get it to show up for you guys. I'm going to have to work this issue. Um, the issue is that Out of the Park Baseball does not look like a normal game. Um, and for some reason, when it goes into the 3D game mode, and maybe it's because I'm using the 3D mode, maybe if I switch it to the older mode, it might work. Uh, the issue is it goes into that mode and... If I have it in a wind capture the window, it's not picked up. Um, if I capture a monitor, it's picked up, but I have triples. And I don't believe either Game Show or uh, uh, Infinicine has a means of getting the window. Um... You know, just, uh, sorry, getting one monitor, the main monitor, which uh, um, OBS lets you get the main monitor. So, it's kind of a tricky thing to broadcast, which is kind of annoying, but it is what it is. Uh, so, I have to play with that a little bit. But, um, anyway, I hope you enjoy it. We're going to end... We are going to end the stream here, and, uh, see you next time. I'll prob I'm going to probably try to be, you know, playing around more with the other software and streaming. I am extremely tempted to get Pez after hearing such good things from it. Not just from, uh, if, you're fi if, you, if you're familiar with Operation Sports, Mr. Rich Grisham, who was involved with that for many years. He is now, in fact, involved with Out of the Park Baseball. And, uh, I'm uh, sorry, with out of the park developments. So, the baseball, they just come out with a hockey game, if you like hockey. But, um, both him and, uh, um, I was watching the, what do they call themselves? Uh, I think I have some. Uh, Spin Brothers. Spin, Spin Bros. Two brothers who stream FIFA and Pez and the one of the brothers was streaming Pez and, and sorry streaming FIFA and getting quite frustrated with the gameplay and apparently he's uh streamed uh he likes Pez's gameplay a lot better as well so I'm real tempted to lay down the bucks and get Pez and see what that can do see what that how that feels once I can adjust the con for me to really play it effectively, I'm so used to the FIFA controls, I'm going to have to tweak the PES controls to let me, uh, you know, have the same, you know, like switch. I think the shot and the cross are switched and the speed up is in the wrong place, or not the wrong place, but in a different place than FIFA. So we're going to have to deal with that. If, uh, and see what that game is like. I think I'm real tempted. But anyway, I will see you all next time, and take care.